Hello, this is Manash Patel from the EIA Capital Group. Today is November 29, 2011. This is our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the global markets where we cover everything from U.S. to Europe to Asia and so forth. We've been out for a little while due to my new baby girl being born, so spending some time with her. Uh, we will be starting to resume everything now on a weekly basis um, <clears throat> moving forward. Uh, so just uh, be patient with us uh, and thank you. Uh, but let's begin. <clears throat> this is our normal disclaimer to state this is for education and use only. All charts that you're going to see are basically for thinkorswim, tradestation, or freestockcharts.com. <clears throat> Here are my contact details. You can uh, email me at mpatel at .com or info at eiacapital.com or you could access any of our free videos to learn Ichimoku by going to ichimukutrade.com, register for free, and go to the education section. You'll see all the videos there. There, or you can follow us at Twitter at ichimukutrading.com. Ichimoku Trading. <coughs> okay, let's begin. Is by going overseas. Let's go and cover uh, the week. Remember, these are weekly charts that we have. Um, first, we're going to go for Frankfurt, which is German market. <coughs> And you could see these resistance levels, these support levels that we outlined a while back ago, probably about a month or two ago. You could see we kind of got them and bounced off them. If you look at the weekly time frame, we basically went down, starting a trend. We pulled back to a major resistance level of 62.50. We held it. Now we've come down. And the question is, what's going to happen now? So we basically have a possibility of ranging between 5,000 and 62.50 on the weekly time frame. Until we break those levels, there's really not going to be anything going on there at all. So those are major key levels. If you look at the daily time frame, <coughs> nothing exciting going on there at all. And we could enlarge this. You're basically hanging around the cloud, which basically means we're just consolidating. Really nothing going on at all. So 6,500 levels is the kind of key to break. Um, in order to do that, we've got to first get above 5,900, which is going to be critical. Okay, that's the, for the German market. <clears throat> Let's go to the London market. You can see the London market is a little more closer to the cloud. That's good, uh, but this is consolidating too. Nothing really going on at all. Major support level is going to be 5,000. Major resistance level is going to be 6,000. So you got a thousand point range for the basically the FTSE market in London right now, as far as the weekly is concerned. On a daily, you got really nothing going on at all too. Uh, Paris, which was the weakest of all of the markets. You could see that basically it's closer to the support level of 2750 than either the German or the London market. And you could see that it's just basically starting a trend down, pulled back to about 30, <coughs> 34.15. Okay, and that's its major resistance level right now. And then it's kind of sat there and come right back to down to the support around 2750 and we're kind of hanging around. This thing's got to get away from the support. If not, it's going to have the ability to break down, start a trend to the downside. Remember, that's the Paris market right there. If you look at the German, that was not close to support at all. So, you know, the Paris is a lot more weak. Again, <clears throat> you could keep on go, doing the hedge pair trading, you know, going along the Frankfurt market and going short the Paris market and you still be fine. Uh, South Africa, if you look at the weekly time frame, really nothing going on at all. Sediment is now bearish because it's come out of the cloud. If this thing sits there on this ETF breaks down below about 55, this can start a trend to the downside. 64 in this ETF is basically uh, the resistance level. <coughs> Israel, as you could see from the uh, weekly time frame, is breaking down. Uh, we kind of went to support. Uh, the, right now we're breaking below the support level so we are starting a trend down to the lower side and <coughs> let me shrink this down <coughs> and we do have ability on this ETF coming all the way down to 3250 so only time is going to be able to tell and if you look here on the daily time frame you can see that this doesn't have much liquidity because of the gaps here and there um, it's got to break down further and get below 70, 30, 37.50. So this is going to start a trend to the downside. But it has broken the resistance level, support level, and does have the ability to keep on going lower. <coughs> Turkey, if you look at it, is is bearish trending right now on the weekly time frame. Uh, nothing really to talk about there. <coughs> Russia, if you look here, Russia was bearish trending. The kind of support between... It's stuck now between 21 and 24, so those are basically the e support resistance for this ETF. <coughs> so nothing really going on there. And then, <coughs> excuse me, Stockholm, 
it's bearish trending kind of consolidating now so nothing really going on so that kind of covers everything in Europe um, and a little of Russia too so let's now start going over to Asia let's go look at the Chinese market <clears throat> if you look at the Chinese market we're basically consolidating we're getting to the bottom of the range which is not good at all um, <clears throat> so we'll change this Let's say weekly. I mean weekly. <clears throat> you can see that basically right now we're just at the bottom of the range. And if we break that bottom of that range, which is around 2300, we have a possibility of starting a trend to the downside. <clears throat> so the resistance level is going to be at 2550. So Shanghai is on the verge of breaking down further. Hong Kong, we're not quite at the support level there. We're kind of hanging around in between. Uh, but 17,000 is basically a support level and 20,000 is a resistance level. Uh, Tokyo, we're pretty much at the support level right now, which is around 8,000, well, 8,200, uh, and the resistance level is going to be around 9,200. Nothing really going on there, but it could break down. As the market's opening up, sorry. Bombay market, we're kind of hanging around at the bottom <coughs> at the support level, uh, which is around 50. Uh, right around here so we're at 16,167 right now but we're hanging around there and <clears throat> resistance level is going to be 17,500 so you look at a lot of the Asia countries we're kind of right around the support level and the key is is uh, are we going to support it and start moving back up to the top of the range or we're going to break down through that support level and start a trend to the downside Australia looks stronger to all the Asian countries out there it's not quite at the support level there <clears throat> it is bearish trading kind of consolidating so it is stronger in Australia compared to the others out there <clears throat> let's now come over to the North America side let's go to Mexico if you look at Mexico we're in the cloud so we're just consolidating nothing really going on there but we're not bearish which is good let's go to Sao Paulo the Brazilian market a lot of been talk, people have been talking about the Brazilian market. If you look, <clears throat> went all the way down to our support level of 47,050. Uh, we bounced off that and we're kind of consolidating. Really nothing going on at all. <clears throat> I would not look at the Brazilian market until it gets above 60,000 at least to start looking for opportunities there. <clears throat> if you look at Canada, uh, we've kind of bounced off the support level of 11,000, came back up. We got to the resistance level around 12,000, about 250, about 400. Bounce off that. We're kind of hanging around, just consolidating. Nothing really going on. It's got to break 12,500 to start looking at bullish opportunities. And if it breaks 11,000, it's going to start going bearish again. <clears throat> Colombia, if you look at the ETF, it's basically breaking down, starting a bearish trend on the weekly time frame. So that's not good at all. And that's it. Oh, we forgot Korea, uh, which is in Asia. Uh, nothing really going on here. It's just consolidating. Uh, but <clears throat> this is a little more stronger than the Australian market. So Korea is stronger compared to all the other Asian countries out there. Now let's go to the U.S. side. Remember, on the, the left-hand chart is the daily time frame. Right-hand chart is basically the weekly time frame. So let's go look at the E-mini S&P 500 futures. If you look at the weekly time frame, it's really doing nothing except ranging between 1,056 and 1,300. And it's just consolidating. Nothing really going on there. <clears throat> One thing I want to notice is, let's go look at the monthly chart. <clears throat> if you look at the monthly chart and zoom in, you could see that the major support level we have is 1126 on a monthly time frame that's held. Okay, We're at a minor support level right now, uh, which we're kind of hanging around, which is about, I would say, let's go enlarge the chart. So if we put my mouse over there, it's around 1188 is a minor support level there. So <clears throat> we're kind of there, and a minor resistance level is going to be 1220. So 1220, if you look at the weekly time frame, sorry, the daily time frame too, you could see that 1218 and 1220 is basically a major res resistance level that this thing has to overcome to start going bullish. Uh, if this thing starts breaking down, it does have the ability to sit there and start going back down to the 1121 that we showed you on the monthly chart. If it does, it will hold, probably hold there because that's a very, very strong support 11, uh, level there, 1121 uh, on a monthly time frame. <clears throat> Let's go look at the NASDAQ, the NQ. Weekly, just consolidating, doing nothing at all. 
on the daily, you could see that we basically broke out of the cloud, came back in the cloud, so we're basically consolidating right now. The more we consolidate, the stronger the bears are going to be. This thing has got to make a move and get above 22.72, which is its major resistance level. If this thing breaks below 21.50, then it does have a possibility of starting a trend to the downside and does have a possibility going all the way down to about 2059. So <clears throat> next two weeks going to be critical as far as NASDAQ is concerned and the ES. Uh, Dow futures, same thing. Weekly is in the cloud. Uh, daily... <coughs> daily time frame we're above the cloud but that doesn't really mean anything we're still consolidating but you could see that the Nasdaq on the daily is weaker than the Dow and look at the daily time frame let's go back to Nasdaq it's, it's in the Nasdaq it's in the cloud on the ES we're right above the cloud barely and if you look at the Dow <coughs> we're above the cloud more okay so as daily is concerned the Dow is a lot stronger right now uh, compared to ES and ES is strongly compared to the Dow so that's the order of sequence as far as the daily time frame is concerned and if you look at the Russell futures same thing <coughs> except uh, if you look at the weekly time frame it is below the cloud so and it's consolidating so this has more of a bearish tilt uh, long term on the weekly time frame than anything else so let's go look at the weekly time frame for all the instruments if you look at the weekly time frame this is below the cloud and consolidating so it has a bearish tilt <coughs> the Dow is in the cloud okay uh, ES is in the cloud but right at the bottom of the cloud so the so ES is weaker than the Dow as far as the weekly time frame is concerned <coughs> and the NASDAQ is in the cloud too so if you look at the NASDAQ now and compare it to the Dow basically the NASDAQ is a little more stronger than the Na than the, the Dow as far as the weekly is concerned long term picture so if you look at the weekly time frame it's basically uh, NASDAQ stronger compared to the Dow. Dow is then stronger than compared to the ES. So it's a little twisted compared to the daily time frame, but that's the order of sequence that you're seeing right now uh, where we went through that on the <coughs> um, both the weekly and daily. If you're doing any pairs trading, I definitely probably would go probably long the Dow, and maybe short the E-mini S&P 500 futures, uh, <coughs> and that would be a good pairs trade moving forward. That's it for this week. I hope to see you next week. Have a good week.